This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today I correct some misinformation from some of my recent videos. Let's get to it. So I pride myself on giving accurate and clear information on my channel. Once in a while I make mistakes. Sometimes tests get skewed for reasons that I don't quite understand at the time and you know it happens. So when that does happen, I like to make videos like this to correct said misinformation as well as clarify things that may not have been as clear as I wanted them to be the first time that I put the video out. So the first thing we're going to talk about is boars. My farming and boar taming video had a good chunk of misinformation about boars. First off, everything tames them the same. So if you take a look here, I fed this guy a single turnip. You can see it's 33%. This guy here was fed a mushroom, 33%. Uh, this one was fed the carrot. You can see it's at 33%. You, you see a trend here. This one, a raspberry, 33%. And this one was a blueberry at 33%. So all things that you feed them or all things that you can feed them, tame them at 33%. And I did not know turnips existed when I did that video. Uh, so I did not test turnips, but yes, they will eat turnips. And as you see, it's 33%. So what went wrong? That's something that's very important to point out here because it can affect your tames as well. So I learned this when I made the wolf video that when you leave the area, they go into stasis and stop taming. However, when they go into stasis, it appears that their timer for taming continues to tick down. So if I feed this boar a turnip or carrot or whatever, and then I leave the area, he freezes and unloads. However, his tame timer that for that food that I gave him continues to tick down. So if he tamed at where he was at 10% when I ran out in the area unloaded, when I come back, he will continue to be at 10 percent because that timer continued to tick even though the area was unloaded. So when you are taming something, make sure no matter what it is, if it's a wolf, a boar, a lox, whatever, anything that you can tame in this game, you need to be in the area while it's taming. Now you don't have to be directly up on it, the area just needs to be loaded. Now there's one other bit of misinformation that I gave in the boar video and that was I said that they would only breed if you fed them mushrooms or carrots and that was false as well. I don't know how that test got skewed. I still don't understand it. I've tried to replicate it and do everything I can to figure out where I went wrong in that test so that I could explain to you where I went wrong. And I don't know. I don't know if it was changed in a patch or what, but I have tested the mushrooms, the carrots, the raspberries, and the blueberries, and the turnips, and they will breed on all of them. So I te when I was testing that originally, I thought that's strange that they won't breed when I feed them that. So I tested and tested and tested and did everything I could to try to figure out why they weren't breeding and nothing I did would get them to produce a baby. Now they do. I was on my server. I threw a bunch of berries in there. I did not expect them to breed. I came back. There was berries. I had some other people test it for me. They came to the same conclusion. So yeah, I have no idea. I don't I don't know what to tell you where that went wrong or why it wouldn't work for me before even though I was thorough, but uh yeah, it's totally a thing. They will uh they'll breed on pretty much any food. Next up, I have a clarification for my video about comfort. So in that video, I stated that the max comfort level was 17. Technically, that's incorrect. And I'm going to explain why. I mean, it's right, but it's technically you can get more. First off, from what I can tell, in order to do this, you need to cheat. So you need to be in debug mode with, with creative mode essentially turned on in order for you to do this, or you need to find a specific item out in the world and then build your house around it. So let's talk about what two items can actually increase your comfort level above 17. That would be the Yule Tree and the Maypole. So if I place down the Yule Tree, it will go up to 18. And then if I place down the Maypole, it goes to 19. Okay, so let's talk about these two items uh, so you can understand what I've learned about them. And I'm still trying to fill in some gaps here. So first off, the Maypole can be found 
in the meadows biome. So you can find the little villages. There will be a maypole in the middle of some of the little villages. It's random procedural generation. So who knows where it's at or if your map will even have one. It may, it may not. Who knows? But if you find one, it is possible to build your house around one and get said buff. From what I can tell... There is no way to get the recipe to make one of these things. There is a recipe for one. If I show you here, if I bring up my, my menu and we highlight over it, you can see 10 wood for dandelion, four thistle, and a workbench. There's a recipe for one. But there doesn't appear to be, from what I can tell in my research, there doesn't appear to be any way to get that recipe. And the same thing with the Yule Tree. So from what I can tell, apparently at some point when this thing was in closed beta, alpha, whatever it was before it hit early access, uh, they did a Christmas special and the Yule Tree was a thing. I saw a post that said you could find them in the world. And then I saw a post where they had a news post where they were talking about it. Uh, the Christmas... Uh, uh, whatever thing they were doing and they had a picture of this tree so i don't know if it's a situation where you can only get the recipe and it only becomes available on a specific day so it may be a situation where they have to do a small mini patch to flip a flag in the game to allow you to have the recipe and then they just turn it off we've seen many games do that arc does that there's been you know many games have done things like that where they'll they'll have items but you can't access them until a specific holiday then they let you and then they turn it back off so and then you can only get them after that with cheats. So that could be the case with the Christmas tree. Um, other than that, I have found no way, other than cheating, I should say, I have found no way to get the recipe in the game. If you know of a way to get the recipe for either of these in game without being in debug mode, please let me know down in the comments because I've spent way too much time on the Discord searching around and on Reddit and Google and everywhere else to try to find out information about these two things. So once again, Maypole can be found out in the world. You can build your house around it, in which case you would be able to get this buff um, much higher to 18 if you did that. So that is 100% possible in game without cheating. However, it looks like the Yule Tree, you have to cheat in order to get the Yule Tree. Once again, um, if you have more information on these, please post it for us down in the comment section so I can verify it. I'm just sharing with you uh, that I wanted to put it out there that it is possible to get higher. Um, one, you have to be lucky enough to find the maypole. And two, if you want the tree, you're going to have to cheat. But 17 is what's possible without building around a maypole or cheating in a tree. So the next bit of info is a clarification on my structure support video. So in that video, I said that the wood beams were trash and they they pretty much are they do act the same as a ceiling piece I was correct about that so they can only go so far out before they break this here is the limit from a piece that is not a foundation piece if I stack them on a foundation piece we can go just a little bit further because they work just like all of the other pieces when it comes to their count from a foundation piece so that should be the length there we get one extra because it is touching a foundation piece this one is one further from a foundation piece so there you go they are handy in some situations because you can use them to jump the gap between of them or between a foundation piece and another piece you can also use them as support pieces and they do have their uses they're not completely useless they're just like any other build piece though they they have a count limit now the log beam is pretty much the same situation the difference with the log beam is that it can go a little bit further because of the fact that it is a little bit longer so if we stack them out here and then we take a look sorry about the sun and then we attach them we should be able to attach one more here to the end before we hit our break point there we go and then that last one there should eventually update and then break and there you go so you can see we can go just a little bit further here it sticks out well i mean the other one broke too but you can see you get just a little bit more length than this one up here and that one is only touching the non-foundation piece 
but it goes the length of the one that's touching a foundation piece because they're naturally longer. Now, there is a beam that is insanely useful, and that is the wood iron beam. This thing is a completely different monster. It behaves completely different than all of the other beams. So first off, if you attach it to something like what we have here, where you can see I have it attached to a wood structure piece that is not a foundation piece. Now they're all red. Look at them. They're all red, but it went all the way out to here before pieces started breaking. Look how much longer we can go with this, even though they're all red, which is weird. I think that's a bug, but I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. And then look at how this changes. So I stack some ceiling pieces and look at how the ceiling pieces change as we go out from it. So I want to point that out. These can be used to drastically extend how far out you can build in most circumstances. And they definitely provide support to your ceiling pieces even when you are using them as a support piece. So if I was to, for example, stick a ceiling piece to this and then start building out, we're only going to be able to build so far out before it starts to break. So, and then that piece should break. Yeah, that piece breaks. So now if I grab one of the wood beams and we attach it like this and we start building out, and we use it for support and we don't have to attach it to the side. We could attach it to the bottom too. Um, but, and then we attach it like that. And now we go here and we attach another piece. And then those were all foundation pieces for a second, but as you see, they slowly updated and we got an additional piece on here. And now that end piece went from red to yellow and we were able to stack a different one. Now, if you attach this to stone, it's insane. So here we go. It's attached to stone. So first off, here's the normal wooden beams attached to stone. So you can see they go, they do go further because the first one that is attached to stone becomes a foundation piece. So this is another way in which they would be useful. However, if you were to attach a ceiling piece here, it would act the same as these pieces. So you see, we attach it, it becomes a foundation piece because anything, and I covered that, anything that's attached, any wood structure that is attached to stone, uh, does become a foundation piece so they behave they behave exactly as you would expect them to, to behave however these beams look at this so let's let's break this so that i can jump up here look at how far this goes out when you attach it to a stone structure and then it slowly starts to turn red as we go out here but this is absolutely nutty Look at that. So it gets all the way out here before they start breaking on us. Now, the thing is, is we can also go through here and we can attach ceiling pieces to these and gain structure support all the way out as you see here. So look at this. We gain support all through here. Now, the other thing that is crazy, take a look at this. So all of these now, all of these wood pieces they're done updating they are all now foundation pieces so it goes all the way out to here before we lose these wood pieces counting as foundation pieces and then it starts to get unstable then this is our first dark green one and then we go all the way out to here and finally we get to to a red one so if you are close to a stone piece and you're building out with these, all of your pieces here gain extra stability because now all of these count as foundation pieces because they're all blue. Now, if we were to attach one onto the side of one of these, it will eventually update and then turn green. So these are crazy, crazy, crazy handy and super efficient for getting you support. Now, another thing I want to point out is if you use them as a pillar, if you take a look, our ceiling piece that we have on here or floor piece, whatever you want to call it, is acting as a foundation piece as well. So if we stack these up here and we place one on top, you can see we want from this one is a foundation piece, not a foundation piece, not a foundation piece. And yet our piece that is connected to it, that it is supporting 
is now a foundation piece. So not only are they super handy for supporting outwards, they're also super handy using them as pillars because they turn whatever piece they're touching into a foundation piece. Now, if we had a normal pillar, it would not act like that. So if we just stack them on top of each other, as you see here, you can see that this one here is not acting as a foundation piece and this one is okay so do me a favor if you're still here and you're still watching please do me a favor if you see anybody quoting one of my videos and information from one of my videos that has incorrect information that we covered today in this video please correct them so we can get the proper information out there and if they don't believe you direct them to this updated video that way we can ensure that everybody is getting the proper information because not everybody who watches my videos sticks around to the end nor do they bother to hit the subscribe button so they're not notified when i put out these correction videos and they may not get served up the thumbnail to click on to see it so you know that's how youtube goes so if you see somebody quoting the information, you see it somewhere, help spread the word and let's get the correct information out there. And I want to apologize for the misinformation. I'm human. It happens from time to time, but please know that if it does and when I do realize that I am wrong, I will do my best to get a video out as quickly as I can showing you the proper information. Once I'm sure I now know all of the proper information and I'm not going to continue to spread misinformation. Okay. So hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did uh, and you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other Valheim videos. And I don't just cover Valheim. I cover all kinds of different games. So you never know when I'm going to be uploading guides for a game that you may be playing. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider in that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my elite group Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.